Hello Python coders, this is Alan D. Moore and I am the author of this book, Python GUI Programming with TK Inter, available from Pact Publications. Today we're going to find out just how easy it is to get started building GUIs with TK Inter. If you want to follow along you're going to need three things. You're going to need Python of course and that means Python 3 this is 2021. We're done with Python 2, so definitely have Python 3 installed. The next thing you're going to need is TK Enter. Now, if you install the official Python binaries from python.org, you should have TK Enter already installed. It comes with it. If you are on, say, Linux and you've installed from your repositories, you may or may not have TK Enter installed. Just check your repositories. It's probably just a separate package. Uh, if you used a third-party installer like Anaconda, Homebrew, Macports, you're kind of on your own. Um, I'm sure you can figure out it's probably already installed. If it's not, it shouldn't be too hard to install. All right, the third thing you're going to need is a code editor. Now, that seems like it should be obvious, but more and more I'm meeting Python people who have never actually worked in a code editor. They've worked in an analytical environment like Jupyter or Spider or in an Esri product, and they haven't actually just written a Python script by itself. So if that's you, you need to find yourself a code editor. It doesn't have to be a fancy IDE. Um, you don't have to go out and spend money. In fact, there's a code editor that comes with Python, if you have the official uh, binaries. It's called idle, and it's actually written in TK Enter. So bonus, right? and that's what we're going to use today. In fact, you see it right over here on this screen next to me. That's idle. Um, I changed the, uh, the look of it just a little bit, but that's otherwise idle. Uh, we're going to use that to write a TK into program. So, let's begin. First thing you got to do in the script, which I've done already over here, is import TK enter. Now in Python 3, that's TK enter with all lowercase. If you see a tutorial that has an uppercase, that's an old tutorial on Python 2. Um, you should be doing it all lowercase. Notice that I have aliased it to TK because TK enter is a lot to type. Some people will do a wildcard import. Uh, well, they'll say from TK enter import star. I don't recommend that you do that. Um, those can be the source of some subtle bugs and it's just messy. It's not a good way to do things. So we're going to leave it in its own namespace called TK. So whenever we need a TK class or, or object, we're going to have to prefix that with TK dot. Right? That's all that means. All right, first thing that happens after our import is that we have to create an instance of TK. So I'm going to call this root, and it's TK dot capital TK capital T, lowercase k, and that creates my TK object. Now my TK object is a very special object in TK Enter. It is, for one thing, it's the root window of the application, um, like the main window that everything's on. It also represents our application itself and is sort of a central point of control for the application, uh, which we'll see in a minute. And I'm calling it root because by convention, this is the root window of the application. So nothing else TK-wise, nothing else tk wise can be created until we have that root object. Um, you can't create any variables, you can't create any widgets, nothing else, because they all need to have that, that root object created. So that's always going to be the first line. Now the last line in any TK interscript is going to be this. Um, we need to run that TK objects main loop. So we call root dot main loop. What that does is it starts the event loop. Now here's basically how any GUI library works. You've got something called an event loop and as a user interacts with the program as they click buttons, type keys, whatever, whatever they do in the, in the program, it generates something called an event. That event goes into a queue. 
right? So a first in, first out list, essentially. And then when we start main loop, um, TK enters a, an infinite loop, and every iteration of that loop, it checks the queue for events, and it takes off an event, and it looks to see, is this event tied to anything on the back end? And if it is, then it runs whatever that is. And then it goes to the next event until the queue is empty, and then it cycles the loop again. In the meantime, more events have probably come in. So that's what the main loop is. Now the main loop ends when we close that top level window. So any code you put after that main loop call isn't going to run until the user has closed the application. It's important to remember. Okay, so anything you put after there, don't think it's going to run while the application's running. It's only going to run after the application's closed. So you might put some cleanup things there, but generally this call to main loop is going to be the last thing in our GUI. Let's go ahead and save that and let's execute it. Okay, and as you can see, I've got a little window here. It's just an empty little window called TK. Good. We'll close that out. Now we can configure this root window a little bit. For example, we can set its window title. We're going to write a little diary application, so I'm just going to call it my diary. Uh, we can set its geometry. We'll make it uh, 800 by 600 pixels. And let's go ahead and run that. Now you can see I've got a much bigger window. It's called my diary right there. All right. Now we probably want some more in our GUI. So the next thing we need to do is create some widgets. What is a widget? Well, a widget is a piece of our GUI. It's a little component we can plug in. Uh, you can kind of think of them like a box of Lego, where you've got different types of pieces and you can snap them all together any way you want. That's kind of what widgets are. Um, there's a whole list of widgets included with TK Enter, things like buttons, uh, things like entry boxes, check boxes, um, empty frames, and of course labels uh, where we can put text. So let's go ahead and create our first widget. Let's create a label. Uh, let's see, we'll call it uh, name subject label. And to do that, we just create an instance of label with a capital L. All of our widget classes have a capital letter at the beginning. And the first argument we give it is a master window or parent window. Um, and that's going to be our root, our main window. Um, all of the rest of the arguments to these widgets are generally keywords. And those keywords are going to be used to configure our widget. So for example, with a label, we want to set what text is in the label, and we do that using the text keyword argument. There we go. Okay. Now we're going to create an entry for our subject line. So we'll call that subject input. And that's going to be the entry widget with a capital E. Once again, make the root its parent widget and actually this one we won't have any other keyword arguments just yet okay uh, I think next we're gonna create a list box to let our diary have some different categories so let's first think of some categories uh, how about um, maybe we want to talk about work uh, hobbies maybe health, um, bills maybe, yeah, oops, all right, there we go, so we've got some categories, and to let the user choose them, we're going to use a widget called a list box, so we'll say cat input, let's make a label first, text, equals category. Now we'll make our 
input, and that's going to be a TK list box. Once again, root. Okay, now some widgets will take configuration as keywords. Some widgets we need to populate in a different way. So to populate this list box, we have to call a special method on it um, called insert. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, we'll do this in a loop. We'll say for category in categories, cat input dot insert. Okay, the first argument is going to be where we want to insert it. And I'm going to use a constant that TK has uh, that represents the end of something. And it uses this constant a lot to refer to just the end of anything. It's tk.end, all caps. So tk.end, that's where I'm inserting into the list. And what I'm going to insert is the category. Let's go ahead and make our last entry widget. And that's going to be a text box. We'll call this message equals tk.text. Again, the root is the parent. OK, the last thing we're going to add to this GUI is a button so that we can save whatever we've entered into the form. So we'll call that the save button. And it will be a tk.button with root as the parent. All right, that's all of our widgets created. Let's take a look at this GUI. F5, execute it. All right, and what we've got is a blank window. Uh-oh, why is that? Well, we have created our widgets, and we've told them that they belong to the root window. What we have not done yet is place them on the window. So in TK Enter, that's a separate step. And what we need to use to do that is something called a geometry manager. Let me explain how this works. So every widget when we created it is assigned to a parent widget. But then we have to use a special method on the widget to tell it how it is going to be placed on the parent. And there are three different methods that we can call to do this. One of them is called pack. And pack is a geometry manager that just essentially stuffs the widget starting at one side and just stuffs them one after the other into the, the GUI. Um, it can be any side, so you can stuff it into the top or the left or the right, or the bottom, uh, doesn't matter. But pack is probably the oldest one, maybe. And so people don't like to use it. It does get a little confusing when your GUI gets complicated. Uh, the next one would be grid. And grid, as you might guess, allows you to place your widgets on a grid, like in cells in a spreadsheet, if you think of it that way, or, or cells in an HTML table. Grid is preferred by most TK Inter developers. It's a lot more powerful. Um, it's a lot more easy to kind of think about what you're doing. So that's what we're going to use today. The third geometry manager is called place. And that allows you to set widgets at just a pixel location. Um, although that may sound like it's the most intuitive and simple one, it actually makes for very bad GUIs. Um, because we want our GUI to be able to function well when the user, say, resizes the window or changes the font size or something like that. OK, so we're going to use grid. So to do that, let's go to our code um, right here after our subject label. I'm going to just call subject label dot grid. Now, once you have called any geometry manager on a child widget, that parent can only use that geometry manager from then on. So as soon as I call grid on a child widget, we can't use pack or place anymore. It's got to be grid for the rest of the widgets or we'll get an error. So keep that in mind. Now, by default, grid is going to place this on the next available row in the first column, starting from the top left of the application. So this is going to put our subject label at the top left of the GUI. If I want to put my input next to that, I need to say subject input.grid. 
we're going to say row equals zero. So we start counting rows at zero. And column equals one, which is the second column since we start counting at zero. Okay. Let's do the same thing here with our label. So cat label dot grid. And we're going to say row equals one, column equals zero. And for our category input, row equals one, column equals one. For our message box, let's see, message grid. Hey, but I'm going to change this to message input just to be consistent. Message input dot grid row equals two, column equals zero. Another argument you can make to grid is column span or row span. So if I want this um, text input to spread over the same space as both the labels and the entries above it, then I can specify a column span of two. That'll make it span two columns in the grid. There's also row span if we wanted it to span multiple rows. All right, finally, our save button. We're going to grid that. Row equals three. And we're actually going to say column equals one because we want it over to the right. So if you skip a column or skip a row, um, it's not going to matter because you don't have to put something in every cell. As a matter of fact, if you skip rows, like say we want to make sure that this save button is always at the bottom. I could make this row 99 and it's not going to create a bunch of space. Any empty column or empty row just collapses in. Okay, so we can use that to leave some room. Maybe we're going to want to put something in between those two widgets in the future and we just don't want to have to renumber everything. All right, let me save that. All right, and now let's run it. All right, so now we've got a GUI. Uh, it's a little ugly and we have some problems. So let's look at these problems. So first of all, um, these labels are taking up a lot of horizontal space more than they need to. We'd much rather have that space dedicated to uh, actually our, our entries where we're going to be typing. The next problem I see here is that our save button's missing text. Let's, let's fix that. And then also, you'll notice if we expand this window, we just get a lot of empty gray space. Um, that's, not, that's not so great. We would really rather that the GUI sort of adapt to whatever space that it has. So I'm going to leave this on the screen. And we're going to go over here to our code and we're just going to fix these one by one. Okay, so the, the first thing is how do we make these take up less space and this take up more space? Well, since this is a grid, Okay, any change we make to the way a column expands or shrinks is going to have to affect the whole column. So we can't just call that on the widget. What we end up having to do is call a method on the parent, and that's going to be column configure. Okay, and then we give it a column number, in this case one, so we, we want that first or that second column to expand and we're just going to say weight equals one. And what that means is that whatever free space is available, we want to prefer to give it to one. Now, if I wanted to have multiple columns expand, I could give them each a weight value and it would be distributed accordingly. So one that has higher weight would get more of the free space. One with lower weight would get less of the free space. Okay, so our, our column cells are now going to expand. As the, as the GUI expands, but our widgets aren't yet. So what we need to do is effectively take our widgets and stick them to the sides of the grid cells that they're in. And we do this by an argument 
to grid called sticky. And what sticky takes are cardinal directions, so northwest, east, and south. Um, and we can pass these in like this as just a string with letters. West and east is what I passed in here. That's one way to do it. We can also use some more of those tkinter constants. So we can say here sticky equals tk dot capital E plus tk dot capital W. That's effectively the same thing. It's better to use the constants um, because if you have a syntax checker, say in your in your editor, it can't really check whether that string is valid. What it can do is check whether those constants actually exist. So this is just a little more bug proof way of doing things. Um, so on the uh, cat label, let's sticky that. We'll sticky the input. And then for our message, we'll actually sticky it on all sides here. And just to save space, I'm going to just do it with the letters here. It doesn't really matter what order you put those letters in as long as you've got all four. Uh, for the save button, I'm going to just sticky that on the east so that it sticks all the way over to the right. Okay, the next thing that is a problem in this GUI is, of course, our save button. Did not have any text on it. And we use the keyword argument here, text equals save. Let's fix that. Um, this categories box is taking up an awful lot of space. So we can use a height argument on that to just tell it to show one line at a time and then we can arrow through those options. Okay, so finally, when we have extra vertical space, I want this message area to expand. So to do that, we're going to use back up here where we did column configure, we're going to go root.row configure. And that is in row 2, and we're going to give that some weight. That should expand that. So let's close the old version. Let's execute the new version. That's much classier, isn't it, right? We've got things um, expanded out. We can scroll through our different options there in the category, type a subject. There's our save button. We can type there in the box. All right, good. Um, now. It's still not great looking. One thing is that all this stuff is really just tight together. So another option we can use in grid when we put things in there is we can add padding. Now there's two kinds of padding you can add. Uh, regular external padding and internal padding. Uh, so if we go to say subject label here, when we say grid, we can use external padding. We can say pad x equals 5, pad y equals 5. So x is going to add horizontal padding, in this case 5 pixels on each side. Pad y is going to add vertical padding, so in this case 5 pixels on each side. And that's going to be outside of the widget. So I'm going to save that. Let's execute that. And now you can see that there's padding around the subject. Now because that's expanded this, the grid, column um, category also has some space around it as well but let's go ahead and add some more padding here okay, but on the other label Okay, we can also add internal padding, and that adds padding inside the widget. So let's try that here on this category input. So that keyword is iPad X. No, it's not an Apple product. And iPad Y 5. It's just short for internal padding. And let's hit that. 
and that actually doesn't look so great does it because you know we've, we've added our padding but it kind of shows more than one line so mm, let's take that out actually let's just make that external padding by removing the eye tell you what we will add internal padding on our save button iPad Y equals 5 now let's execute that and see what that looks like. So now you can see our save button is a lot bigger, a little easier to click on. That's all there is to it. We now have a GUI. So that's our first video and we have managed to create a GUI. It doesn't do anything yet. So in the next video we're going to learn how to make this GUI actually do something. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Please subscribe to see more content like this and definitely check out my book. Thank you.